Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. What a great love you have bestowed on us. What a great mercy that found us and brought us to yourself. Lord, as we rejoice in the fact that you have chosen us, Lord, as we rejoice in the fact that your eyes are upon us because we are the proper children in the proper season. We are waiting on you again today that your grace will further draw our hearts to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for revelation of your word unto our hearts. We ask that you draw us by your spirit. Everything else that is so in our hearts. We are praying this morning that by the ministry of your word and by the power of your spirit, you will do a definite work, a definite work in each of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for your presence already here with us. Be exalted forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. I'd like you to quickly turn your Bible to the book of Judges. Chapter 8, I read verse 12, and then I switch to 20, to 21. And when Ziba and Zamuna fled, he, Gideon, pursued after them, and took the two kings of Midian, Ziba and Zamuna, and discomfited all the hosts. 21. And his, uh, 20. And he said unto Jetha his firstborn, Up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Ziba and Zamuna said, Rise thou and fall upon us. For as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Ziba and Zamuna and took away the ornaments that were on their camel's necks. Amen. Now, as we begin our devotion this first day, we first of all recall what God began to say to us last night, the fact that his eyes are upon us, the fact that he has chosen each one of us specifically for what he wants to do. And here this morning, we are seeing a situation in which A father was expressing his heart's desire concerning his son. Gideon was announcing his agenda over Jetha, his son. Here we are these two kings, Ziba and Zamuna, that Gideon and his squad had captured. 
they were already captives they were already disarmed they were harmless and they were captives and then laying them before his son Jetar he said boy rise up and slay them rise up and slay them cut them down I see a heart of a father of a warrior of a leader wanting to announce the agenda over this young man to position him in that which he must grow into for him to become a prince in Israel to become a warrior and a leader and the father was expressing his expectations over him he said here is opportunity for you to receive the kind of heart that will position you to be a leader here is an opportunity for you to begin to liquidate your enemies for you to begin to 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 destroy the adversaries of God's people here is an opportunity for you to begin to inculcate the heart disposition of a man the heart attitude of a warrior here is an opportunity Jetta, for you to begin your exploits in life that was what was in the heart of Gideon when he brought these two kings I know they are kings but they are harmless I know they are kings but as you slay them before me I'm standing here the soldiers are all here take up your sword and practice take up your sword and perform something is here to begin to position you for what heaven has advertised over your life rise up and slay them and what was the terrible response of Jetta the Bible said Jetta I imagine he looked at the faces of these fearsome men warrior kings Ziba and Zamuna and as he looked at them the sword in his hand began to tremble he could not lift his hand as he looked at them something told him that if you dare it they will swallow you and Jetta could not perform the Bible says he feared he was not able to meet the expectation he was not able to grow into that program of heaven over his life that was very terrible and this opportunity that he missed became a lifestyle I saw that Jetta the firstborn of Gideon ended up becoming a non-entity he grew up to become a mediocre and at the death of his father Gideon his half brother Abimelech mobilized vagabonds from his mother's side and came and slew him and slew 69 other sons of Gideon 70 of them were gone except one 68 so 69 were slain only the last born Jotan escaped 
all the other people that constitute the generation of Gideon were wiped out. Because somebody said, I am just a youth. Somebody said, I cannot perform at the proper time that his father was positioning him for exploits at the point that heaven was beginning to train his hand for warfare. Get uh, Jetta could not respond to heaven's expectations. That was how the whole generation of Gideon were wiped out, except Jotan that escaped. Even Jotan never grew up to become a leader in Israel. Abimelech took over. Can we see first what God is announcing over you? That heaven is saying, rise up. Even now, it is time for exploits. Rise up because the battles you win at this stage, they will give you the proper footing for what heaven is setting before you ahead. The battles you win for at this stage gives you the leverage to be able to remain a warrior in the years ahead. Your choices of the now, they brighten the positive choices of your life now. They brighten your chances for tomorrow. Jetta lost out. Jetta could not perform. Now, but there was something that the king said while they were responding to Gideon. When the boy could not perform, you know, the, the Bible said, Ziba and Zamuna, they said to Gideon, Rise down, you yourself. Better stand up and fall on us and finish us. Forget about this boy. For as a man is, so is his strength. Now, that is where I'd like you to key your spirit for this morning's devotion as we'll be raising issues that you need to talk to God about. They said, look, Gideon, why are you wasting your time with this boy who has an infantile mind, an infantile understanding, a childish disposition, an infantile heart? Why are you wasting your time? Why don't you rise up and do it yourself? So Gideon had to stand up and slay them. Then they said, what I don't want you to forget. He said, for as a man is. Huh? Let me hear you. For as a man is, so is his strength. Help me tell your neighbor like that. Neighbor, <laughs> as a man is, so is his strength. Now, we'll be tracing that in a moment. We'll be tracing what is it that forms the internal constituents of your life. For as a man is, there is something that is your makeup. There is something that is your internal makeup. And once there is weakness, once there is hollowness, once there are deficiencies inside you, you cannot be able to perform. So, as we see the desire of Gideon over Jetta, placing before him the kings for him to slaughter, positioning him for victories ahead, and making him see the divine possibilities so that tomorrow he can become that great warrior and leader. That was the expectation in the heart of this man over Jetta. 
Vegeta could not perform. Now, there was a reason. They said because he feared. And because he was yet a youth. Now, I prefer to take the first reason. Because that's what is reasonable to me. There was something that constituted an eternal fear inside him. There's something that made him weak inside. We'll be tracing that shortly. What is it that weakens a youth and makes him unable to function, unable to do exploits at this stage of life? What is it that constitutes the fear of your heart? What is it that makes you unable to rise when God says, rise up? The second matter does not mean much to me. He said, because he was a youth. I'd like you to see the reason why I say that's not the matter. Because the father who began to say, speak to him to rise up and slay, he knew that his son was a youth. But he also knew these kings were harmless. These kings have been disarmed. And he himself is standing right beside him. The other soldiers are with him. He knew that this opportunity for this boy to grow the correct heart for him to become what heaven is positioning him for. But Gideon will not perform. I'd like you to see another youth. And we're talking about David, the young man. Can you turn your Bible quickly? First Samuel, chapter 17. I read from 32. First Samuel 17, from 32. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth. And he, a man of war, from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a deer. And took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him. And delivered it out of his mouth. And when he, rose, he arose against me, I caught him by his bed and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing, note that, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Amen. Amen. Now, you see another youth. So the reason given over Jetta, why he could not slay the captives, the kings that had been captured, it could not be a tenable reason at all. Because we are seeing another youth here. In fact, it was King Saul himself that began to speak to him and counsel him and say, David, young man, what you are trying to attempt is a suicide mission. You dare not try it. You are only a youth. You are only a youth. Don't dare it. And... When he finished, David said, excuse me, sir, with due respect, I'd like to inform you that this youth, something has happened to his heart. Hallelujah. This youth is a youth with a difference. And he began to roll out his testimonies of past victories, past exploits, past battles that he had fought as a youth. And then he gave me a clue. He said, look, this, young, this man you are seeing, this giant, he's uncircumcised one. He's not under any covenant. No cover. 
he is outside the covenant of God's people. This man you are seeing, he has defied the armies of the living God. I'm seeing a man whose strength is being revealed. I'm seeing a young man who has come to know God, who has come to grow in the knowledge of God to a point where he could stand on behalf of God and begin to do exploits. For as Daniel 11, 32 says, he said, those who know their God, what shall happen? They, and only they, shall be what? Strong. So the strength to do exploits that we are seeing in David, you can locate where it's flowing from. You can see that there are things that constituted the internal heart condition, the internal heart makeup of David that positioned him to be able to exercise strength for God. Now this morning, I'd like you to be checking quickly, if I read one or two other scriptures, to be checking what are the things that are causing internal weakness in me. For as a man is, so is his strength. What are the things that are causing internal deformities inside of my heart? What are the things that are causing deformities inside my heart and making me appear as a youth that cannot make any difference for God. So it is not the matter of being young. Jetta was young. David, we are seeing here, is also young. But something is different. And we are seeing the strength of David, where he is drawing from. Where he is drawing that strength from. And you know variously in scripture how that young people whose lives were right, whose lives were focused, how that they had internal strength that enabled them to do exploits for God. Now, when Saul was advising David not to engage Goliath in the battle, there was something he said I'd like you to note before I leave that matter. He said in that verse 33, you don't need to go and fight this giant for thou art but a youth. You are only a youth. And he, a man of war. From when? I didn't hear you. From when? Aha. There's a problem here. Here was the man that wants to begin to perform for God from youth. And King Saul said, don't try it. You are only a youth. Then he is announcing to David at the same time that this Goliath that has become mighty and terrible, when did he begin to perform? Huh? Aha, from his youth. So can you see the devil? The devil is busy harnessing the strength of young people, doing exploits for him, only for you to want to stand up for God. He said, no, 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 postpone, postpone, postpone whatever you were supposing to do for God. You are only a youth. There's a deception there. He says, look, as for Goliath, right from his youth, he has been performing. And can you look around you? Whether on the campuses, whether on the cable network, you are seeing young people anointed by the devil. Who are taking positions for the devil. Even you like this, before Jesus grabbed you, there were some outstanding things 
you were already trying to do for the devil. And the devil doesn't mind that. The devil doesn't mind to begin from the youth, to push you, to move you, in order to make mark for him. Because whoever catches the youth, whoever has his quiver full of them, that's the one that we take over. So he said, don't worry, don't worry, just postpone your own this morning. Every postponement to engage in the battles of the kingdom, every postponement to become a youth of impact for God, it will be nullified. So we hear David say, no, I will not. I will not stand aside. I'm going to engage him. But that's not where we push further this morning because we need to raise matters of prayer as we are going on quickly. I want you to note that Jetta had opportunity to make a difference. He had a space to be able to live up to the expectations of his father and that there are expectations of heaven over your life and God himself is standing behind you David realized the presence of God David realized that look with God by my side as long as he's with me I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me amen what constitutes the weakness in the life of Jetta? What is it that brought fear to his heart? Certainly it's not about being young. What was it that made David to rise up to achieve that great feat that he achieved that day and brought deliverance to the whole nation? It has to do with his internal makeup. I'd like you quickly to turn your Bible now to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Are you in Ecclesiastes 10? Verse 16. And 17. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Amen. Amen. Now I'd like you to note what is it that makes it easy for a youth to be despised? What is it that makes even the word of God compare a a leadership that is defective to that of the leadership of a child. What is this negative impression that is easily located or put around a youth? Why is it a woe to a land? Why is it a woe to a fellowship? Why is it a woe to a family? Anywhere that it is the child that is a king. The reason is simple. He says one of the evidences, one of the terrible indices is that the princes will normally eat when? When do they eat? In the morning. 
What is it that God wants you to, to get at this morning as we want to pray? First of all, note that you are in the morning of your life. And when you do not realize what is the right thing to be done in the morning, you are already exhibiting a high sense of childishness. An infantile spirit has grabbed you. When you forget that there is something meant for the morning, the morning is that time of freshness. That time in which certain crucial decisions are being made. It is the time of labor. It's the time of gathering. It's the time of building. That's the morning. But we are seeing a morning here that is being wasted. What is bringing the waste? They eat in the morning. People that are ruled by appetites in their morning. What will make you even if God is positioning you for kinship to become a mediocre, to become ignored, to become unable to perform like Jetta, it is that you have allowed appetites to consume you. When? In your morning. You have allowed appetites. Different kinds of appetites. Wrong appetites. Appetites for food. Appetites for, for immorality. Appetite for sinful entertainment. Appetite for sinful pleasure. Appetites for laziness. Appetites for slothfulness. Appetites just for feasting, merrymaking in the morning of your life. He said, Look, these princes that are supposed to bring direction for the people, these princes that are supposed to be able to give leadership. Something has happened to them. They have been consumed by appetites in the morning. It's not as if there's any time that unbridled appetite will ever be useful for any man. But there is a moment, there is a season of life in which appetites unbridled uncontrolled, they become the waster of destiny. Whatever kinship that God was planning for you, whatever leadership that God was, was advertising over your life, whatever God is announcing, there is something that will cut you short on your feet and make you unable there's something that will weaken you inside like Jetta. Even with his father standing by, a sword in his hand, the enemy is helpless. But this man, there's a, there are internal weaknesses, internal deformities that will not allow him to raise up his hand to strike at the enemy. The key matter is feasting in the morning. When your king is a child, there are many, many, many things that go wrong in a land. When I was in secondary school, I read the story of the, 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 the Obi of Abba, the king. The father died and he was the only one to be crowned. And he was crowned at six years old. They put his picture 
in the magazine and the, the, the crown was almost covering his face as he was carrying the big crown. Then, the king makers, they didn't know what they were doing because very soon, their king started to perform. In the compound, he will join other children to be packing sand. They will pursue him, or pursue him, or pursue him, or, and grab him. Say, don't you know the audio? The, the, the? You know, I was, I was following the story in the magazine, you know, on and on. Another time, he will be in school. Because six-year-old child has to go to school. King or no king. So he went to school, and um, they, they are in class. During break, that's how we run after somebody and be pushing to beg for buff, buff, buff from him. And the kingmakers will run after him and grab him and say, what are you doing? Respect yourself. The boy doesn't know why they were disturbing his life. On and on, he troubled them and they troubled him. Until they got tired. And then they bundled him and sent him abroad. That's where he stayed and schooled and grew and became a young man and got educated and came back. He's still the Obi of Abba, but he's in his late 40s now. <laughs> now, it was the kingmakers that took over the throne until he returned. Now, you may not be a child in age. It is not a question of your chronological age. It, may, it is the issue of your internal constituents. For as a man is, what did we say? So is his strength. And we are hearing this morning. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child. And the princes, they are consumed with appetites in the morning. How is this season of your life? How is it with you? What are the appetites that will not let you be? The reason you need to sort them out again this morning is that those are the things that constitute your internal weakness. And your strength can never be higher. No matter how you want to posture, no matter how you want to do, you know, bold face, there is something that keeps driving fear inside of your heart. And saying, ah, are you sure? How can you? You dare not. And Jetta was trembling with a sword in his hand. He could not perform. But not a David. Appetites. I say appetites for evil entertainment. How has it consumed you? Unholy pleasure. Eagerness for lustful pleasure. That's what the Bible calls it. Appetites for all manner of slothfulness. You are just you are just slothful. You just love ease. You don't like anything that ruffles you. You are you are growing yourself up delicately. Appetite for ease. Appetite for sexual immorality. Appetite. Even for something as simple as food. What to eat just gets you trembling once you see it. Appetize for empty show. You just love to, to keep buying and buying empty things. Just to, just to impress people. There's a, there are these appetites that are holding you. And honestly... If it were later on in life, it's a, later, it's a lesser problem. But the problem is that it is in your morning. Say, woe to you, land, when your princes are feasting, they are given to appetites 
in the morning. I'd like you to beg God this morning. Whatever nature of the appetite that has been holding me captive, whatever is that point at which I've been rising and stumbling and rising and stumbling, oh God, terminate it this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, what you are announcing over my life, I can see it this morning. Right from last night, you began to say it again. I'm a proper child. There is something about me. But no matter how Gideon was announcing the great possibilities to Jetta, no matter how he wanted to train him and inculcate in him the skill and the heart position, disposition of a warrior and a leader, Jetta could not move. Something must move in your life this morning so that you can move. Are you hearing me? Something must do what? Move in your life so that you can move for God. I like you finally. Look at another youth. What makes it easy for people to despise the youth? Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Finally, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conduct or conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. I said there is something normally a negative aura, a negative impression that is being that is hanging around a normal youth. What is it that can make a normal youth to be taken for granted? What is it that can make a youth to be despised? Paul said to Timothy, there are things to take care of and you will not be despised. There are things, there's a way to order your life and you will be a youth with honor. There's something that will constitute the inner strength of your life and your chronological age will be material. And he began to list them. He said, your speech your lifestyle, your manner of life, your conduct, those choices you are making presently, you are, you are surrounded continuously by choices. And it is the choices of your today, the positive choices of your today, that will brighten your chances of tomorrow. He said, look, your conduct, your lifestyle, your manner of life, how is it with you? That as we pray this morning, you're checking, am I childish in my choices? Am I childish in my lifestyle? Am I childish even in my speech, even the way you speak sometimes does not make anybody to take you serious. Your mouth is only full of slangs. There's nothing serious in your mouth. Even you stand at the altar sometimes, you're still playing. 
Your speech is still worldly. You have a lot of Egyptian dictionary in your mouth. You still love to use the language of the world much more. Childishness in outlook, even your outlook, your disposition, your personal projection, the way you are supposed to be taken serious. You mean we should take you serious? When you just wear and you are dragging, you know, a trouser by underneath your buttocks and moving like you are carrying a napkin full of shit. How does someone take, take you serious? He thinks that you are a playboy. He thinks you are serious. Your disposition, your conduct, even in charity, your love. The Bible says concerning Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verse 80 said, look, Jesus. Or the last chapter, uh, chapter 2, the last verse. He said that Jesus grew. Not only in favor with God, he also grew what? In favor with men. Your social relationships. Your social relationship. Your life is full of, you know, tons and tistos. People don't, don't touch you. He said, you, these are the areas to grow in. And what about spirit? You are developing yourself. You are waxing strong in spirit. And all that God is going to do with us in this meeting, he will cause that waxing to take place. In faith, in purity. I like to note that impurities are the things that make evil matter matters to be weak. Matters are supposed to be solid, no rugged objects. But impurities weaken them. If you are going to use any matter in any good way, there's going to be a refining process. A refining. Two things must happen to get steel, which is even stronger than iron. There must be the removal of impurities. First, from that iron, to have a fine, a fine state of the iron, free from any other element or compound. But beside, apart from the refining, there is the additives. There's some particular rare earth metals like nickel that you must add to the pure iron and others to be able to reinforce the strength further. So the strength we are talking about this morning, two things you'll be trusting God for in this meeting. To deal with every form of impurity, anything that causes internal weakness. And secondly, Lord, bring all the additives, all the necessary life virtues, all that is needed to reinforce my inner man so that I can work strong in spirit for what you are announcing over my life. That will be two key anchors of your prayers and expectations as we wait before the Lord right from this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to rise on your feet as we raise a prayer to the Lord shortly this morning. Come and take your throne 
Oh Lord, come and take your place. Come and take your place. Oh Lord, in my life, in my life. Come and take your place, your rightful place in my life. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. Oh Lord, oh Lord, come and take your place. Oh Lord, in my life. Parabaya basan, paya kata labori bashende leboria. In my life, Father, come and take your place. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. Lord, come and shake me. Come and shake me out. Shake me inside out. Your place. Deal. Deal with impurities. Deal with the things that affect my inner strength. Come and take your place. Father, in my life. Marabaya bashendele borobo sandala baria bashendala bori masai kabashiri masai kaba. It's time to respond to the Lord. Everything that is hampering my strength, as a man is, so is his strength. All the impurities, Lord, here I am this morning. You must first deal with impurities before you begin to bring the additives, the things that will reinforce my spirit and make me to work strong for exploits. Lord, come this morning. Is somebody crying out to God this morning? Father, I am identifying the impurities. Lord, I am seeing, oh God, something is happening to me, causing internal def deficiency. There are deformities because of these impurities, oh God. My strength is so small. My weakness is not the weakness of my age. It's not the weakness of my years. It is the weakness of my inner man. It is the weakness of my standing with God. Rakata yaba yaba. Mercy Lord. Mercy Lord. Mercy Lord. Mercy Lord. Mercy Lord. Rakata yaba yaba yaba. Saraba yaba dushia. Oh God, mercy. Makataya Baraba Shiri Vasai Jeta could not perform. He said, Stand up and slay. He could not. Many times God has given you opportunities to make a mark. Something cut you short. You are first struggling. You are first struggling. With your own inner weakness. Oh Lord. Don't let this condition continue with me. Don't let me waste moments of your training. Don't let me waste moments of what you want to do with my life. In this season of life. Barabaya Basuria. Somebody's crying out this morning. All the appetites 
that are weighing on me in the morning of my life i said no to you this morning oh god show me mercy i arise lord out of this i arise oh god out of the appetite for sinful pleasure out of the appetite for evil entertainment out of the appetite of laziness out of the appetite for ease out of the appetite oh god for every casualness out of my life Why do you waste, want to waste God's program for your life? Look at the expectation of God concerning you, brother. For how long will you keep God waiting? For how long will you waste divine opportunities? Let heaven arise for you this morning. Call upon the name of the Lord. 